Okay. You should listen to these colleagues here. You could see why it is time for me to stand down, I tell you. <laughs> so we're going to make a start on the AGM. Um, you'll have to trust us, I think, to record the apologies for absence because uh, I don't know if we need to go through the whole list, but we'll, uh, we'll make a note. Um, and I'll welcome you, as we have in the agenda, to this uh, annual general meeting. Um, as I say, it's an important part of our governance, I think, to make sure that we are, uh, give members the opportunity to ask any questions that they have of the activities over the previous year. Um, I'm joined on the top table uh, by Philip Marsden, who is our treasurer, uh, and was our treasurer last year, and will give us a short presentation in a bit up there. But on my left, I'm joined by Jonah Grunsell, uh, the world's worst kept secret, as my successor as future chairman, particularly as there's a document being circulated today which has got his photograph on it as chairman. So that, that sort of rather blows the, um, the confidentiality. The process that we followed, which I will declare shortly, is the, uh, the voting process that took place. Once we'd had all the votes in, we met as a board to elect a new chairman as a result of those votes. Uh, and Jonah was elected, which we'll report the numbers in a minute, and the board was delighted to offer Jonah the position. I should reassure, this is not me distancing myself from it, but I took no part in that process, which is the correct, appropriate way to behave, but for what it's worth, I think it's a really good idea. And I think you'll be a great chairman, and we look forward to seeing what you can achieve over the next six years. So, welcome. So, uh, can we take the minutes of the last meeting as read? In fact, I don't know if Claire's here, but she made me read them all over again last week just to make sure they were okay. No, she's not in the room, but she's uh, oh, she's up there, yeah. In fact, just to be awkward, I even asked for a change. <laughs> uh, so is everybody happy with the minutes from the last meeting? Uh, if they are then, uh, then the, the main item on the agenda really, uh, other than Philip's presentation, is the uh, Chief Exec's report. So over to you, Sonia. So I'm just going to give a brief summary of some of the things that we've achieved over the last year. And as I said earlier, it's, it's slightly odd to talk about everything we're planning on doing and then take a step back and talk about what we've done. But it is really important so that people know how we've spent the money and what we've done with our time. You've got a copy on the table of the annual report and a lot of this detail is in there. And I'm only going to highlight some things as indeed the annual report does. There is so much more, as I said earlier on, in that big sort of um, mapped out slide that I showed that we have done. And all of this is only possible because of the team um, that we have, the staff, and importantly, the volunteers. We have around 70 volunteers, many of whom have ME, many of whom are working at home, writing articles, recording um, interaction articles onto audio podcasts for us. We have people like Emily, who's just gone, that's, that writes research roundups in lay language um, for our website. And she wanted me to point out that uh, Rick Dunn's presentation earlier on metabolomics, she has done a lay summary of the Naveau study that, um, that Rick referred to earlier. So if you want to read it and understand it, it is very, very good, and that can be accessed on our website. What you've got on the screen at the moment is an infographic that just shows some of the things that we've achieved. And what I'd like to say without criticising any of that, and you heard some of those figures earlier on, and it's all fantastic, is that what I want to see next year is direct impact for people with ME. What difference did we actually meet to every single one of the people that we worked with? And I think we've got a bit of work to do to be able to get to the point to, to be able to present that. So um, in our last strategy, we had three areas of work, our inform and influence work, our empower and support work, and our research work. So I'm going to start by saying a bit around um, what were the things that we achieved around inform and influence. And you've got that lovely picture there of a team from Vale Williams, or some of the team from Vale Williams. They're a corporate partner of ours that have worked with us for a number of years, given us money and support us in a number of different ways. And they sent a team down to help with the beer festival. And we've got lots of lovely pictures like that, but um, that one made me smile. So um, the first thing I'm going to say is that we did a lot of work to increase the profile of ME to the public. 
So we work very hard to get press and media coverage, which can be incredibly difficult, particularly when ME isn't as recognised as some other illnesses. But during the year, we had five TV appearances, and they included things like the, uh, the BBC Two Victoria Derbyshire and Matthew Wright's show on uh, Channel 5. We had 27 radio broadcasts. We had Martine McCutcheon, the actress who was on EastEnders and did various other things, uh, was on All Star Mr and Mrs and won £5,000 for us. All of those things really helped to raise the profile of Emmy in a very public arena. We advised on the script for the BBC Doctors programme uh, because they had somebody with ME and on the back of that we have just this week been asked to advise on another script. So what we're starting to see is that ME is becoming an illness that's talked about on soaps, soaps that I don't watch but um, a lot of people do and, and that's a really, really good thing to see. One figure that did blow me away is um, our amazing huge team of three people in the comms and policy team that do policy, you heard Katie talk earlier on, um, who do all our online stuff, who do all our sort of initiating press and media stuff, so that huge team of three people, had a letter in um, one paper, uh, had a letter in papers across the UK, both national and local, 470 times last year. That's more than one letter per day of the year, and I think that's an astounding achievement. I haven't got the return on investment in what we'd have actually paid to advertise in the newspapers. I think that's in the annual report, but it's very high. Some of our films, and Joe, who's um, doing the filming today over there, um, puts our films together, and you saw the Employment Project one earlier on, were viewed over 7,000 times. We saw an increase in our social media with a reach of over 270,000 people. And some of you will have seen our social media campaign, the first that we ran, called The Hidden Faces of ME. And that, with that reached more than 60,000 um, engagements, people actually talking about it and interacting with that campaign. And as I mentioned earlier, the Great British Beer Festival. We worked to increase the understanding. So I mentioned earlier about um, the pilot uh, webinar that reached over 150 GPs. On top of the work that Tom t uh, talked about earlier with Santander, we actually went into five of their eight regional centres where they've got around 4,000 plus staff at each centre. And we had a stand and interacted with staff around their employee support and um, uh, employment responsibility sessions. And we had a number of people that contacted us after that to receive information and support themselves. We had a range of events like this one last year. The focus was on integration and was targeted at healthcare professionals, and we had a number of people that came along. And we had an event in Scottish Parliament. We did a lot during ME Awareness Week. We had um, a couple of lectures at the prestigious Gresham College in London, and we also met with hundreds, literally hundreds, of um, primary care practitioners um, at an exhibition that we were involved in. You've heard about the work that we've got planned with um, decision makers, but last year we did um, a lot on the devolved nation manifestos that Claire and uh, that Claire and Cristala talked about earlier on. We gave evidence to a number of parliamentary inquiries. We worked with a number of support groups to support the work that they were doing and input into some of the consultations they were engaged with. We consulted um, when governments want to consult on various ideas and policies they've got coming up. We input there and we often go out and say to people with ME, tell us about your experiences and then we feed that back to amplify the voice in the way that Katie was talking about earlier. And of course we had our Close to Collapse report that you heard about last year when Catherine Hale came and presented with me. So in terms of our empower and support strand of work, um, our direct support includes one-to-one -one support, face-to-face -face support, um, over the phone in the way that we talked about earlier, but also through our online ME Centre, which is a real hub, if you haven't seen it, of information. We try to fill the gap with targeted information, but we also do provide support through our peer support forum, uh, which can be accessed through there as well. Last year we had, um, I have to read this figure, 557 1,600 visitors to the website, which is astonishing for um, a small charity like ours. On average, every month, there was 2,800 downloads of our publications, which just shows how much people were interacting and needing that information. Over 18,000 searches were made um, during the year on our services directory, looking for local support groups or other services. 
and our peer support forum that I mentioned earlier on, over 85% of our users on that forum said that they felt less isolated. And quite frankly, if that's one thing that we've achieved, uh, you know, and it's only one part of what we've achieved, but that's a, a really important thing, I think, knowing how isolated people can feel, and I'm sure some of you in the audience can, um, that will resonate with. We developed a number of resources, including one for people who are newly diagnosed and their GPs, and um, we developed a self-advocacy resource to help people advocate um, for access to services, etc. And that came on the back of people for ME asking for that resource. We worked with people with ME and we launched that at our conference last year. And of course we have interaction, and if you've never seen it, there are some copies outside, which is our, our print magazine, 56, 54, 56 pages, goes out three times a year. And I tell you, if I had a pound for every time someone said it is a lifeline, we'd actually be making quite a lot of money for our work. We, um, in terms of the one-to-one -one support, we had over 3,100 people that used our telephone and email support service. And I did work it out on the calculator last night, and if I remember this correctly, I think it was something like 12 inquiries that we dealt with on, on a daily basis for each working day. That's a lot when you think about we've got two part-time members of staff and then a staff team that do um, help and support and answer the phone at times. We also had 170 people that went through the employment project and we had the living and learning project uh, uh, in Scotland that you heard about earlier on. In terms of collaboration, um, we reached out to Avon and Bristol law firm and ran a pilot with them for, to support people providing legal advice for people appealing their um, um, ESA benefit and um, so where they'd been turned down, they were provided with legal advice and we certainly had instances where on appeal people won. We developed a relationship with um, a company called Really Useful Stuff. We have their shop on our website, not because we just would like to sell things, but actually they um, have sourced a number of independent living aids and that there are some fantastic things on there. So you haven't seen it. I would have a look to help people with day to day living, help you putting on your socks, being able to turn on the kettle remotely so you don't have to go and stand and wait for it when you've got very little energy. And instead of taking the 10% commission that they offer us, we give that back to the customer to help reduce the cost of living with this illness. Um, you've heard about our employment project earlier on and also our peer mentoring project. So in terms of the research work that we did, um, this is a picture of Gina Rutherford, one of our amazing, one of the brightest people I think I've ever met. I didn't understand what she was saying half the time, she was so bright, but she, um, she did an amazing piece of work looking at muscle dysfunction at Newcastle University with Julia Newton and Phil Manning and um, couldn't get funding to stay in the ME field and I think has gone to, I can't remember which one, I think it might be cancer, but. Um, she, so we help fund her study and Julia has talked for us previously about the output of that work. We funded um, in the last year £145,000 on five projects at four universities and you can read more about those projects on page 14 and there's also more information on our website. And as I said earlier, research is just a small part of what we do. And that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but for us it is, and, and we, we now need to refine how we invest um, that money in biomedical research. The, um, in terms of collaboration, alongside the things that um, we've all already talked about, we provide the secretariat for the research collaborative, and we continue to do that and work very proactively and uh, ran the conference at the end of September, which Rick came to and he talked to earlier on, but we also had international speakers and we have, a, I think we had 80 odd researchers from the UK and, and um, a few other countries that come along to that. And that ha is already starting to lead to new collaborations by bringing researchers together in a way that they weren't previously. You've heard about the, um, the MEGA, the ME, CFS Epidemiology and Genomics Alliance, and that was really kick-started by something called the Grand Challenge, which the Research Collaborative initiated, and the result was a team of people now working together on a potentially uh, a big data study, which potentially will get funding. And as I mentioned earlier, we um, have Emily, who does our work with the Research Roundup. So um, this is the bit where I would normally talk about what next, and Claire said you can't possibly put all those pictures up there, they're totally random and don't really mean anything, but I quite like them because actually it stands for a number of the things that I thought we would be talking about today. 
we've got to take the time and seize the moment now and actually create that step change that's needed. And that's, as I said earlier, is really behind our five-year strategy. And you'll be really pleased to know I'm not going to repeat our whole five-year strategy because you heard it earlier. So um, we know that there are lots of pieces of the jigsaw that we've still yet got yet to find. And I'm sure if we put up a, a picture of a jigsaw and said how much is missing, there would still be a huge number of gaps. Now is the time to start filling those gaps and to do it properly. We need to work with others to really embed and um, develop the work that needs to happen and that we believe that we can do that um, through our three strategic touchstones of improve, inspire and invest. Thank you very much and happy to take a few questions. So any questions for Sonia? Stunned silence. I think that's fine. I would, um, if there aren't any questions, what I would like to say is we did have some questions online earlier on, on the live stream, uh, from people saying, why aren't you taking questions from the live stream? I'd just like to say to those people that are listening, I'm really sorry that we're not able to do it. We have a team of one person running the camera, running the live stream, running all the technical bits um, to make that happen. Uh, to be able to take questions is a logistical nightmare. We tried it once and it didn't work. So if you do have questions, you're very welcome to email the organisation. I will personally answer the questions. So I invite you to do that. Please don't give Joe a hard time because he's not in a position to do that. Thank you. OK, let's move on then and just... Uh, this will be a you again, Sonia, really, but just to quickly record the votes received for the three new trustees. So this is the supporting member vote that goes out through interaction and our other channels. And as Alan said earlier on, um, the trustees listen. You know, we, we make appointments based on these votes. So we had three people that were being put forward for to become a trustee. Jonah Gruntsaw had uh, 77 people who said yes, eight people who said no, and 30 people who said no preference. Sue Hardy, who unfortunately can't be here today because she's not very well, um, 90 people said yes, 10 people said no, and 16 said no preference. And then for Gordon, who can you wave, Gordon? Go on. <laughs> um, uh, we had 83 people who said yes, 7 people who said no, and 26 who said no preference. Okay, thank you. So I think then uh, we're happy to note that they are well and truly elected. And as I said earlier, Jonah, you become our new chair about... In, a, in about 10 minutes, I should think. <laughs> um, Philip, why don't you take us through the numbers? It's late on a Friday, if that's a clue. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Philip Marsden, and I'm your treasurer. And I'm going to take you through our financial results for the, uh, the last financial year to 31st of March 2016. Firstly, let's just have an overview of our income and expenditure, and that's in this bar chart. Here you can see the five years, 2012 to 2016. The blue column is income, and the red column is expenditure. And very importantly, the blue column is higher than the red one uh, in the last two years. So once again, we have a surplus of income over expenditure. And our income has breached the one million pound mark. So income in the year was one million and 13,000. And uh, expenditure was 816, leaving us a surplus of uh, almost 200,000. You'll see that in those, the first three years there, 2012 to 2014, uh, expenditure exceeded income, which is not something you can carry on doing forever, but uh, that those um, deficits, uh, the excess of expenditure over income, was funded by a, an exceptional donation in 2010, and then things came back into balance in 2014. Um, in 2014, I should point out that we did have uh, an exceptional donation in that year, um, and in the, the last year, to 2016, we had what we'd call an exceptional legacy or legacies. We had about 350,000 pounds of legacies which came into to this year, 
which we can't depend on every year. But nevertheless, it left us with a, a healthy surplus, which uh, has been added to our reserves for the future. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just have a, a look at the breakdown of income in a bit more detail. And there you can see that uh, of the total income, which, by the way, was uh, a four, about a 4% increase on last year, so we keep going up. Um, you can see that the, the big slice there is the blue slice, uh, which is we call voluntary income, and I'll give you a breakdown of that in, in a minute. Uh, the, the red slice is what we call charitable activities, and that's largely subscriptions and, and conference fees, and that was very similar to last year. So the bulk of our income is what we call voluntary income, and I'll give you the breakdown on that voluntary income last year. Uh, that voluntary income totaled 870,000 and, and is about 85% of our total income. So it's most of it. We had a, a steady and predictable income from trusts, and trusts is the blue, the blue slice, and also from donations, which is the red, red one. But we received a large legacy um, in, in the years, as I mentioned, and that all goes into the green. So the green slice, uh, sorry, it's green on my slide, it comes out on gray on this. The gray, I should say, the gray slice is legacies, uh, which contains the exceptional legacies that we, that we had this last year. Now, the, the legacies, we have to be very careful with these exceptional incomes. Um, we can't just up our, uh, all our costs because we got to be sustainable. And the great thing about our charity is we want to be here. We're here for the long term. And therefore, when we get an exceptional income, we don't spend it straight away. We plan very carefully how we're going to spend it over the next two or three years. And we have made those plans, and Sonia is, uh, has, has discussed them. So in the meantime, that surplus through the, the legacies will stay as an, in our accumulated funds but the accumulated funds will, will drop down again in the next two years. And I'll explain that in a minute. Let's just look at the expenditure. The expenditure was 816,000 in total, and that was up 9%. So we managed to spend 9% more than the previous year, so that's good. 80%, so the great majority of our expenditure is that orange slice and it's called charitable activities, which is really all the main things that we want to do in this charity. It covers all our, our services. The cost of generating the income, which is the blue slice, we want to keep as small as possible, but we have to spend money on generating our income, obviously. But the cost of that, of generating our income, was a bit smaller this year than the previous year, so that's good. And indeed, we raised £5.40 for every pound of cost we spent in generating that income, we raised £5.40 in income, which is considerably more than last year, which was £3.22. I don't think we'll keep that going because we did have this, these exceptional legacies. But uh, compared to other charities, we do well in terms of the uh, income that we generate um, on the amount of money that we spend on generating that income. Let's look at that orange slice in a bit more detail because that is the, all the services that we want to provide in this charity. Um, as I said, they account for 80% of our total expenditure and we want to keep that, exp that percentage high. We spent 14% more on charitable activities this year than we did last year, so that's good. Regarding the split between those uh, three areas, we spent quite a bit less on communications on policy this year, but we spent a lot more on information and services, which is the, the orange part. And research, which is the, the gray slice, was about the same as last year. We spent 4% more on research this year than last year. In terms of what is in those three slices, and particularly in the... Uh, 
in the, cha in, the, in the orange slice, the information services, the biggest one. It is laid out in the annual report, so I'd refer you to the pages in there. They're pages 9, nine to 13, show what the money was actually spent on, and indeed, Sonia was talking about that earlier. Then finally, a look at our accumulated fund balances. You can see that the, the fund balances mirror the, uh, the income over the last few years. The orange part of, the, of those columns is what we call restricted, restricted funds. They're restricted in that we can only spend those funds on certain things uh, which the donors, the donors of the funds wanted us to spend the money on. So often it's research, but not always. It'd be specific projects, often research projects. And this year, 2016, the orange component, the restricted component, has dropped, and that's because we've spent quite a bit of money from uh, an exceptional donation the previous year, and it's now been spent on a specific research project. And the legacies that we received, the exceptional legacies we received this year, were unrestricted funds, which is good, because it means we can spend them all on what we think are the best things to spend them on. And that's increase, increased the blue section of the column uh, quite markedly this year. So the total accumulated, accumulated funds we've got at the end of the year is now 570,000. But as I mentioned before, it's not going to stay there, because we're here... To, to help our members and the ME world in general. So we will be spending uh, the exceptional um, legacies that we receive, but of course we've got that planned in to be spent over the next two or three years. So you will see, unless we get another exceptional income, which we have the last two years, if we don't, we just have a normal income, we will see the accumulated funds fall because we've, we've got plans for how we're going to spend those in a very sustainable way. The current year has started satisfactor satisfactorily. We're, we're, we're basically on, on plan. One final point I'd like to make is that these financial accounts only show the results of financial transactions. So it's money actually given to us and money spent. They take no account of the huge value provided by individuals, members, supporters, people that go out and collect money for us, all those runners of marathons, riders of cycle races. These numbers take no account of those. So we have to thank all those people who have given their time without any payment, and there's a lot of, lot of them within this room. If that was all costed and charged in here, it would show we're a much bigger charity than would appear. The numbers would be very much larger. So we must thank all these people that have given their time to us so freely. Are there any questions? Very clear, Philip. All very clear. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Good. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. The only remaining item on the agenda is to uh, ask for your approval to reappoint BDO as auditor of the charity and authorise the board, I like that, to fix the remuneration, I mean, to, uh, to agree the remuneration, I seem important here, <laughs> for, for said auditors. So is everybody content for that to be the case? Excellent. So is there any other business, he says exhaustedly, on a Friday afternoon, with my fingers crossed. If that is not the case, then I declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for your participation throughout the entire day. Really appreciate it. Thank you.